Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Welcome to the 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. We'll be working with Oberlin College students this winter to prepare some amazing videos in math, science, English, and history to help you pass your teacher certification exams. Use these videos to help you in your studies and your preparation. And if you need some extra help, attend a workshop. We're holding workshops throughout the United States, in Massachusetts, in California, in New York, in Florida. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Welcome to the 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're going to be working on number 64 on the 53 Math MTEL. This is a really important problem because it covers fa uh, factoring out second degree polynomials or quadratic equations. It's very important that you're able to do this skill. It will help us with all sorts of other math problems that you're going to see on your secondary um, teacher certification exams for middle school and high school. So let's start with number 64. I'll read it over and then we'll factor this out. It says which of the following is a factor of the equation 3x squared is equal to negative 12x plus 36. But notice I, I said we're going to be factoring out um, a second degree polynomial. It's a second degree polynomial because the, the x term, the largest exponent is raised to the second power. If, this, if we saw an exponent raised to the third power, we'd say it's a third degree polynomial. But this one, the largest exponent for the x is the second, so this all here is a second, a second degree polynomial. Now all second degree polynomials um, are quadratic functions. And when we think about a quadratic function, and we're going to do factoring of a quadratic function, I want you to put it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Now you'll see this, this structure in, uh, in your course of working with quadratic, fun quadratic functions a lot. Sometimes we use this to help us graph. Sometimes we use this to, uh, for using the quadratic uh, equation. But for now, we, I just want you to turn this equation into something that looks like this, where all the terms are on one side and on the other side of the equation is equal to zero. We can do that by adding 12x to both sides and minusing 36 to both sides. And these terms cancel out and become zero. And what you're left with is 3x squared plus 12x minus 36 equals zero. Now, we're going to continue to factor it out, but I just want to point out some very important things with this uh, quadratic equation or second degree polynomial. I want to look at the, the a coefficient for a moment. When the a coefficient, the 3 here, is a positive value, we know that if this was, were to be graphed, it would, it would be concave up. All our second degree polynomials are going to form a parabola. But if the a coefficient in your, in your quadratic secondary polynomial is positive, then, it, then, then the graph itself is going to be upward facing concave up. And, if, and the c term here, this is your y-intercept, meaning when x is 0, these terms would cancel out and your y-intercept would be whatever uh, c is. In this case, it's negative 36. So if we were, we were to graph this out real quick, We'd be like the y-intercept where the graph intercepts the, the y-axis would be uh, when, x is, when x is 0, y is negative 36. It would be down here. And because the a coefficient, the 3, is positive, we know that this would be an upward-facing parabola with two roots, two x-intercepts. All right? Okay, so let's continue with the factoring here. We'll come back to some of those ideas at the end. I want to look to see if I, looking at these, these coefficients a, b, and c, uh, since they, they all share a, a common factor of 3, we have a 3, 12, and negative 36 all share a common factor of 3. What I can do is I can factor out the 3, and I can rewrite this as x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals 0. All right, it's a little bit more manageable. Now I have a now I have a second degree polynomial. It's going to have 
two sets of factors get me to zero. This first one, since it's x squared, this first one's just going to be x and x. Now I have to figure out what this, this last one is. Now this is a negative 12 and this is a positive 4x. When you see that dynamic, it means that I'm going to have these last two numbers that are going to multiply to get to a negative, but when I, when I do my foiling and add up those middle terms, they're going to get to a positive 4, 4x, a positive value. So it means that one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be a negative, so that when I do a positive times a negative, it gets me a negative number. And when I add up those two terms, they get me to a positive value. So the larger of the two numbers is going to be positive. So let's say the number is 6 and 2. All right. Now, let's, let's do a little foiling, see if we, we factored this correctly. And if we do the foiling correctly, it's going to get us back to the original equation. So first I'll start, I'll do x times x gets x squared, and 6 times negative 2 gets negative 12, and then we do our middle terms, 6 times x gets you a positive 6x, and x times a negative 2 gets you a minus 2x, and if you uh, combine like terms and you modify this, this would be x squared plus 4x minus 12, and that whole thing would be multiplied by 3, and that gets us back to where we're we started from. So we, we in fact did factor this out correctly and we also got a little review of foiling. Alright, so what we have here are two factors of this equation. One of them is x plus 6 and the other one is x minus 2. So the answer here, one of the factors would be x plus 6. Now, how does that, how does factoring help us and, and why would we want to know that? Well remember, we've done other videos on this before, but factors help us identify the roots of x, the values of x that, that um, are the x-intercepts. So what value, and these are the points where our, our y value, or you can think of our y value as the zero, or our output is going to be equal to zero. So what input of x would I put for x that if I added 6 to it, it would get me a zero value so that when I multiplied these all out, it would get me to, an, to a y value of zero. Well, x would have to be negative 6 here, and x could also be a positive 2 here, because if I input 6 into this equation and do uh, ne negative 6 plus 6, this term would be 0. The whole thing would multiply and get me an output or y value of 0. Or if I inputted a, a positive 2 for x here, well, positive 2 minus 2 would get you 0. It would multiply, turn everything into 0, and my output or y would be 0. All right, and, and we could graph those, uh, we, can, we can put that information in a graph. We know that it, this whole thing has a y-intercept of 0, negative 36, and it has two x-intercepts of uh, negative 6, 0, and positive 2, 0, and it's upward facing. It's going to look something like this. All right, okay team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. I was workshopping this video with, with Conti from Oberlin College and we sort of worked through some of these ideas but I want you to, to use this right here and, and make sure you have these skills under your belt. Alright, take care team. Have a great day. Bye-bye.